Hey, how's it going everyone? Thanks for tuning in. Um, so for this video, we're going to be presenting the final module of our energy efficiency class, energy in the environment. Um, so essentially me and my partner, Venus Abdoyahi, um, did our best to make this home as energy efficient and sustainable as possible through various design strategies. And so this entire project is going to show our process, our thinking, and um, ultimately show the progression of a standalone home to a much very defined, well thought out and planned sustainable built environment. So let's get right to it. The location is Rio Rico, Arizona. This is in Southern Arizona, um, right by the border. It's about 20, 30 kilometers north of the border. Um, and so this property in particular is about 5.9 acres um, but essentially you can see that the home was placed on the bottom left corner uh, and so something to keep in mind here is the orientation because north is in this time upward um, and so the climate analysis essentially i use climate consultant to really capture as much data as possible however we did use tucson arizona because that was the closest, largest city that had the most abundant of data. Um, and so here you can kind of see the weather. This red line represents Rio Rico uh, climate. So the lows is about 40, the highs is about 70s. Um, and I live here, so it's fairly comfortable. I also use psychometric chart to really allow me to see what strategies I should consider um, in this box here in the middle based off the temperature, humidity, um, and other strategies that could be implemented. Oh, additionally, uh, this is an image here. You can see of the terrain. This gives you a really good idea of what it looks like. It's, it is an arid desert, so something to keep in mind. The home, this is the floor plan. It's about 4,000 plus square feet. Garage is about 1,000. Total porch is about 1,000. These are the elevations. This gives you an idea of what the home looks like on two dimensions. Um, but of course, um, I have some images. The, so this was back in 2018 when we first built this home. Um, here you can see it's in half inch OSB all the way around. And then here in 2020, you can see the home finished with some minimal landscaping, um, but now we have here our 3D model. We use Rhino, um, and so this gave us really good design and visual aesthetics when we wanted to present our project. This is the north elevation, which is basically the garage and kitchen, and then the south elevation is the master bedroom. This is the 3D model, and here you can kind of see the floor plan, really the whole entire layout. Um, also, you can see that this is the entrance here. This is the living space. Um, this is the porch, all this. This is the kitchen, bedroom one, bedroom two, and then this is bedroom like three. And then the fourth is the master. So um, these are the master bath right here. So this entire uh, model really gives you an understanding of the ventilation of also um, your layout in general for lighting. So we're gonna be discussing those things later on. Okay, now this is the 3D model showing you the west elevation, which is the front of the home. And then now the east elevation, which is the back porch. And so, by first looking at this home, we have to establish what are the issues or what are the things that we can improve upon in order to increase energy efficiency, uh, biodiversity, uh, and really just a, also aesthetic appeal. But the first thing that we have to consider is orientation. In this case, the longest part of the home is facing towards the west. And this is mostly because of the street and the owner's decisions in the layout of the home. But regardless, this just adds to the challenge, but it's not something that can be mitigated. 
So definitely a lot of possibilities that we are going to be including here. Windows, this home has fairly large windows. That is something also we need to consider because these lose a lot of energy. So how can we um, kind of just improve upon that? Next, ventilation. We always want to improve ventilation and make sure that it's very natural. And that way the home essentially breathes when it needs to exhaust hot air or simply allow um, cool, fresh air to come in. Next, roof drainage. We knew this was something that could be further improved upon, so we'll, we, we will discuss that later on. Sunlight analysis. Essentially, this was where we were able to see the summer solstice, the sun path diagram, and really allow the sun's behavior around the home to be analyzed through temperature. So here you can see different times of the day, what walls, what parts are really um, absorbing the most amount of solar radiation. We did the same thing, but with the winter solstice, um, and that way we can combine both seasons and really see what are the areas that need the most amount of shade, protection. Um, and so you can kind of see that here. As for the interior ventilation, we used a mobile app that quickly allowed us to just draw up the floor plan and see different interactions. But we noticed that the kitchen had a lack of natural ventilation, as well as the hall and living room space. Um, and of course, bedrooms could always use more natural ventilation as well. As for interior ventilation, we looked at the bedrooms because the windward side, which is where we're receiving wind from, the southwest in this case, uh, we decided to incorporate an additional window in bedroom one to allow more cross ventilation. The same thing with bedroom four, except we added two windows, a corner set and then a set right next to the master bedroom um, bed. And that way you can also kind of have a few of that uh, space in the master bath really become more easily um, accessed through this natural flow. So this double merger window really allows the south facing window to also um, ultimately in this case have a really natural ventilation and lighting aspect. As for the interior ventilation, the problem was obviously the absence of adequate ventilation once again. So we thought by simply incorporating a cooling tower that was horizontally stretched throughout the hallway would benefit the design. And at first it did seem to make sense, but then we later figured that it would not work due to the kitchen uh, because the kitchen heat air rises. So it would cause a conflict with cool air coming down, but hot air rising. And so uh, we thought that this chamber uh, essentially would not uh, efficiently work as designed. So we essentially mitigated this problem by looking at some skylight vents. That way the kitchen could simply exhaust air straight up. And then we incorporated some additional small windows you can see here on the side. That way cool air is flowing downward, hot air is rising upward. So it was a very efficient um, cycling of that air. Next, the living room area. Essentially, we decided to add more windows to the main door. That way you could have natural ventilation without compromising security. Um, and so this connects directly to the back porch. So we didn't really have to do anything there. All you need to do is really just open up doors, windows um, to the slightest degree. And this allows the most minimal natural ventilation. This is our exterior ventilation analysis. Essentially here, we try to see where are the zones the air is being trapped, um, looking for potential eddies where we have um, cyclones of air that kind of cause issues. And ultimately, this is our first design to kind of separate this flow of air from the Southwest, but also to create a comfortable microclimate and space that can have a usable activity um, given the corner lot of the house. 
As for the back porch, we wanted to, of course, keep in mind the view and the wind that was kind of the issue here. So we first started by thinking of incorporating some planter boxes, some vegetation to first add some cooling to the space through transpiration. And then secondly, the large physical objects will kind of act as barriers for this wind and really slowing it down, helping with the total microclimate. So now here you can see we took it up a notch. Uh, this is our second iteration where we add some more plants um, below the porch. Um, you can see here the corner window as well on the master. So various few things that you can see here um, and their functionality. Of course, we still wanted to look at the entire east elevation. And here we really considered based on the analysis from earlier, the temperature ranges on the walls and really which ones were the ones that needed the most attention in terms of protection. And so we begin our entire design with bedroom one. So here in this first iteration, we decided to add this tree under the porch as well as an additional window for more natural light during the summer. Um, and so then we decided to incorporate this really interesting device which acts as both a shade but also a support for vegetation which then allows um, transpiration and kind of acts as a cooler as well so um, you can kind of see here this overall design but we thought it did a great job by also adding privacy to that single bedroom um, on the other side of the kitchen so um, here you can kind of see it in action and how we decided to expand it upon this wall as well um, so that we can kind of double that effect in that space. And then here on this map, you can see those square boxes kind of demonstrate the new adaptations um, and ultimately gives you an idea of simply creating a microclimate in this back porch, really creating a cozy zone where there's less wind, um, cooler temperatures, and very stable breeze. As for the roof drainage, we decided to adjust the scuppers, um, preferably around the home, that way the natural vegetation um, also gets supported. Um, and also always directing your flow in one direction could lead to um, erosion issues, flooding issues. So you really wanna disperse that as evenly as possible. As for the microclimate in the Southwest side of the home, which is of course the hottest direction um, given the sun's angle, we decided to incorporate much more um, height in the vegetation as well as density. Um, you can see here taller shade trees. Uh, additionally, we decided to incorporate some shading devices on these windows towards the west elevation, um, just to really make sure that uh, in the afternoons in the summer, this space was fairly comfortable when arriving. Um, this gives you again an idea of the progressions. Essentially in the winter, we want to make sure the shade of the trees barely reaches the home. But in the summer, we want to make sure that the shade line of these trees exceeds, covers the entirety of the home. Um, and so this is kind of the idea and action here. This is essentially now the final design in a before and after comparison, uh, really allows you to see the simple design strategies that were implemented based on the direction of the sun. And so here you can see the base case, the proposed design. Um, overall, I think that these are very simple implementations, but of course require the proper um, orientation and the proper direction to be most effective. So that's gonna be it for this presentation. Um, thank you for staying to the end and really learning what it makes uh, and what it takes to make a home sustainable. Um, of course, me and my partner Venus uh, really wanted to make sure that this home was as comfortable and energy efficient as possible. And ultimately, I think we definitely accomplished that because um, this home is on its way to incorporating more of these aspects. 
So if you want to learn more about sustainable built environments or real estate and construction in general, uh, please feel free to reach out to me on my Instagram, as well as my website, where you'll find more projects like this, as well as additional information on how to improve energy efficiency in your region. Um, so that's going to be it. Thanks for tuning in uh, and I appreciate the support. Please remember to subscribe and like this video and I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks.